Intercept Games have now decided to talk about the future of Kerbal Space Program 2 in a far more detailed manner. This takes on the form of a development update post over on the forums and goes into length onto the points that they want to address in the future as well as the reasons they've held back on well, addressing these issues in the past. So let's jump right on over to the forums and have a look at that forum post right now. As you can see, as always, this is posted by Nate Simpson, creative director of the game. We've got a rather lengthy section here right at the start that I'll come back to a little bit later on. I know not everyone wants uh, the nuts and bolts and all the fine details, and uh, some people prefer to get to the nitty gritty straight away. So we'll get to the nitty gritty right out of the bat and come back to the other content later in the video for those people who want to stick around. So what we've got here are 10 issues that intercept games are focusing on this isn't the exclusive list the list is far longer than that it sounds like there's many hundreds of issues that they are working at or on but the point here is that these are the ones that they are wrangling with the most these are pretty much right at the top or choose their own words here are a few of the biggest issues we are wrangling with right now but the important fact here is that just because they are mentioned on this list, it doesn't mean that they're definitely going to be fixed in short order. At the same time, just because something isn't mentioned on this list, it doesn't mean it's not being looked at. There are many other things that they are looking at. And again, we come back to all of that because it is mentioned in the other text on this forum. Anyway, these are 10 issues. Vehicles in stable coasting orbits sometimes experience orbit instability or decay. The status on this is possible fix in progress so they don't quite know what's causing this just yet they've got suspicion and they are working towards that point two trajectories change when vehicles cross a sphere of influence boundaries now this is something i've seen a lot when you're moving from kerbin for example to the sphere of influence of mun you'll find that your trajectory suddenly changes to what well, in quite an illogical way to be perfectly honest the status on this is that there is a fix in progress. So that means they have identified the issue, they are working on it, but of course it will need to go through a QA and a and the whole process. Point three, certain inline points cause aerodynamic drag numbers to spike. Status under investigation. So they are looking into this one and they don't quite know what the cause of that is yet. Returning to craft from VAB causes craft to go underground, possibly rated to Kerbals and landed vehicles dropping through terrain while being approached. Status, possible fix being tested. I've got to admit, number four on the list here, but it's not something I've seen. And to be honest, I don't think these are in any particular order. I don't think uh, they're in an order of priority or anything like that. They're just 10 uh, specific issues. Number five, I have seen quite frequently uh, decoupling events resulting in various issues, including a loss of control Incorrect controllability of decoupled sub-assemblies, loss of camera focus, and other issues. Status may have many causes, but some fixes in progress. Sounds like this could be one that takes a while to actually fix, especially if there are many causes behind it. Issue 6. Save files get bigger over time. Travel log experiencing a landed status spam. Status fix being tested, so they've got all the way through that one and it's now been tested quite likely that could be in June, if I'm reading that correctly, at the June patch, which is patch three. Now, talking about saves, they don't actually address the issue here in this particular 10 points of broken saves. That's something I know a lot of people are experiencing. It's causing some frustration right across the board. Um, unfortunately, not in this list of 10 big issues, but I do know that they are working on it because they do mention it elsewhere here. Number seven. Opening Parts Manager causes a major frame lag. Now, as far as I'm aware, this is the first time they have specifically addressed the issue of the huge performance issues. Now, I'm not talking about performance problems where the game just generally runs slow because it's not fully optimized yet and will be fully optimized nearer to release. That's not the issue at hand here. Likewise, I've seen some people say, what's the problem? I've seen the game, I've played the game at 20 frames per second. Um, now, good luck. If, if you're happy with 20 frames per second, I'm all for that, if that makes you happy. But most people, I feel, are rather looking for a game that will play at least at 30 frames per second, even during the early access process. Because, yes, 
it might well be early access for people that still want to enjoy that part of the process but they do expect issues but like i say they're not talking about the broader issue of performance here what they're talking about is the major spikes or the major drops so that is where you perform a particular activity and you drop to maybe five frames a second or two frames a second or 10 frames a second something equally ridiculous and yes opening the part manager does sometimes cause this the status is experiments are ongoing so it seems they haven't quite identified what is causing that number eight major post liftoff frame rate lag so very similar in the terms of massive drops in frame rate and this time you can actually count the frames in seconds sometimes you'll get one frame every two three or even four seconds this happens immediately above the launch pad associated with engine exhaust lighting that status fix being tested so it looks like they have identified that one at least which is very good news number nine root parts placed below decouplers cause issues with stage separation Sta status under investigation and number 10 vehicle joints unusually wobbly some parts connections unusually weak status under investigation now i'm really liking intercepts approach with this i think it's a great way of showing information this does seem as though they're just testing things out at the moment and it does actually remind me of the way microsoft and sobo approach the development and the uh, communications when it comes to microsoft flight simulator most importantly, however, I really do feel that, that Intercept Gamers could perhaps take this as an example of how to deal with uh, communicating what's going on with bugs. Over here, we can see a description of a particular bug. And then on the right, we can see the status of that bug. So whether it's ongoing, whether work has started on it, whether the work has been fixed, and even, which I greatly admire here, the fact that Asobo and Microsoft are willing to say that work on this particular feature is not planned, letting people know that yes, you may not be happy with this particular aspect, but we're not planning on changing it or improving it. This then is very much reflective of what we've seen in the development post on KSP2 this week. And I really do hope to see more of this going forward. In fact, that does seem to be the plan. They've said, we have been discussing internally how best to improve bug status visibility so they have a better idea of what we're working on. We're looking at a lot of options right now and I'll update you when we've settled on something we recognize the need for this transparency and will come to a solution soon. And this is backed up by community manager Dakota, who said this is a big priority for us and we hope to have more details to share soon to ensure that you're all stayed up to date and are providing us with the information we need to get bugs fixed. Ultimately then, Intercept Games do seem to want to change their approach to communications. Nate said here, still I'm questioning my choice to withhold information about systems in progress Yes, there's always a chance that when we talk about a feature in development that we're also creating an expectation for that feature that will be present in the next update. Similarly, daunting is the possibility that we'll announce that we're working on something that the community perceive as easy. Ultimately then, it seems there's a concern about being too, uh, too transparent and that causing a variety of problems. He also said that increased transparency carries costs and those costs always have to be balanced against other feature-facing work that we could be doing. My opinion on this, however, is that Intercept Games have decided to go the early access route, and with that does come the requirement of increased transparency. It seems that Intercept Games are now coming around to that way of thinking as well. So what's your thoughts and feelings on this? Do you feel this is a great way to approach the game? Do you feel that Intercept Games are right, that players do deserve to be communicated with in an open and transparent manner? Or are you the type of player who's of the opinion we should all be patient, sit back silently and just wait to see what Intercept Games delivers next. Obviously, uh, increased transparency does come at a resource cost. It may slow down other work. Personally, I'm of the opinion that we need it. But either way, do let me know what you think about this in the comments section below. As always, thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys and girls next time.